Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16.5 has been out for a few days and iOS 16.6 beta 1 has been out for a couple of days. We'll take a look at my experience and your experience based off the YouTube community poll where at the time of this video there's over 7,300 votes and over 140 comments. I've read all of the comments to get the best understanding of what the OS's are like. So we'll take a look at the bugs, battery life, some Apple news, and also what to expect with iOS 17 since we're only a couple weeks away. Now, as far as new releases this week, we're expecting Apple to release Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro to iPad. This is something I've been waiting for for a long time, hopefully being able to fully edit different footage like this video and others on my iPad Pro. So that will be about $5 per month. You can pay for it yearly, but there will be a free trial. So I'll be sure to check that out. I'm looking forward to it. Let me know if it's something you'd use in the comments below. Of course, that's competition for things like LumaFusion and DaVinci Resolve, but I can't wait to try it out. Now, ChatGPT is something that's been really popular lately. Google's got their own version with Google Bard, and now there's a ChatGPT app that's specific for the iPhone. Now, the odd thing about this is it's banned in Apple stores for Apple employees, or Apple in general, not just the stores. So you can use that, but maybe it's because Apple's working on their own version, so we'll have to wait and see what they do as far as that goes, maybe with Siri, with iOS 17, or something else. But ChatGPT works great here, and if if you have an account and you're signed up, it works just like it does online, but now you have an app for it. Now the Apple Digital ID is something many people have been waiting for. It's now available in additional states, or one additional state. If we go into driver license and state ID, you'll see we now have the option for the state of Georgia. So if you're in the state of Georgia, you can now set this up if you weren't aware already, and set it up as your driver's license. The state has to work with Apple in order to get this going, so that's why it's taking so long. And not all states in the United States will allow this or countries. So that's something they have to work directly with Apple for and handle that as every state is different and every country is different that way. So maybe we'll see more of that in the future, but it looks like it's a little bit of a slow rollout. If we take a look at Hermes's website, you can see here they have a new case for AirPods Pro 2. This is a little absurd to me, but if you really like their products, you can see $930 for a case. So that's available now in multiple colors. You can see them here. So as we switch here, you've got a few different colors, and then it talks about the overall compatibility. It's made in France and you can see all the different dimensions and details here, but that's quite a bit for an AirPods case, but it's available now if you wanna pick one up. Now, Apple launched Tap to Pay on iPhone in Australia on Wednesday. It allows iPhones to receive payments using Apple Pay, so if you're a, a retailer and you wanna use your iPhone to accept payments, that should be active now for you in Australia. Apple also launched their online store in Vietnam on Thursday. We've had that around the world for quite some time, the Apple Store app as well as apple.com. Now it's available in Vietnam. If you're a web developer and keeping track of the latest technologies, Apple has released Safari Technology Preview. This is version 170. This is updated almost every week, but it's currently available for macOS Ventura and macOS Monterey. So as of May 17th, that's the latest update. Also this past week, they have announced that there's going to be refurbished HomePods. So this is something we're not seeing just yet, or maybe they're out of stock, but they'll come up with a full warranty for $249, and it's the latest version of the HomePod released this year. So that's a great deal, about $50 off or so, and they sound great. I have a couple of them. I highly recommend them if you want some HomePods around the house. So if you want one refurbished with the full warranty, be sure to check back on their website. Now also, Apple redid its original Apple store, Tyson's Corner. And you can see here from tabletops from Michael Strieber, he has some firsthand pictures of it. So this is in Tyson's Corner, Virginia, and you can see the Genius Bar, and it looks a little different. Everything sort of has a wood paneling around it. It looks really nice, and this is an Apple store I visited, the original one, many years ago, and it's been completely relocated and redone. Let me know if you've visited it yet. It should be open, but I'd love to hear what you think of this new design in the comments below, and I'll link this article in the description if you want to take a closer look. Now, as far as future Apple products, the upcoming Apple Mixed Reality headset is said to cost almost $1,500 or even more just for Apple to manufacture one of them. This is according to reports from Minsheng Electronics. So many people have rumored that 
that it's going to cost $3,000 for consumers. Maybe it will be closer to the original cost, or I think it'll be about $2,000. Either way, it's a very expensive piece of technology, even for Apple to make themselves. Now, as far as future iPhones, we know the iPhone 15 is going to have USB-C and more, but Apple apparently is working on micro-LED display technology. That's something we expect to come to the Apple Watch first, then maybe to the iPhone, then maybe iPad. It's the next technology after OLED, and something that should be really great, but no one is really made for phones yet. According to the latest report, Apple is apparently going to manufacture it themselves in stop depending on Samsung. This is according to Nikkei Asia. So that could be something that's a little bit different. Maybe they could sort of leapfrog the technology they're using, or they may have a new method to manufacture this in large quantities. When it comes to iOS 17, we heard about the first set of features coming for accessibility users. If we go into the website here, and of course this is the Tyson's Corner store I mentioned, Apple had their own announcement, and they have some good photos of it here, but the other website I'll link in the description shows it a little bit better. But as you can see, Apple announced iOS 17's accessibility features. You can see some of the rearranged lock screen for some accessibility users. And some have said that they don't believe the lock screen will change based on this photo here. However, this photo is actually showing iOS 16 as far as the wallpaper. So it makes me think Apple could change it in the future. Either way, there's some great features I covered in depth in a separate video. And be sure to check that out if you're interested. But you can see here lots of different things with live speech and personal voice and much, much more. So I'm looking forward to those. Apple always announces those ahead of time, just like they did last year with being able to control your Apple Watch with iPhone when iOS 16 launched. Now, as far as iOS 16.5, the overall experience seems to be pretty stable for a lot of people. I'm running it on my 14 Pro, and I've talked to others that were running it as well. Also, I have the YouTube community poll that talks about battery life. Now, most people are saying it's stable. It has better connectivity as far as cell phone signal. Most people have been saying that. In fact, I've seen that from multiple comments saying that they seem to have a better cell signal in general. And while iOS 16.5 brings a lot of stability and fixes a lot of problems, people were having issues with previous versions that seem to be resolved here. However, there are still bugs that remain and new ones that arise unexpectedly when changes are made to the code, specifically to this USB 3 adapter adapter to lightning. This adapter no longer seems to work with iOS 16.5, so it won't charge devices. So if you plug this into your iPhone and then you plug it into something else, maybe a camera and you want to use that, it won't particularly power it or work properly. So that's something that's a bug that just happened and they didn't really notice as no one probably tested it. There's so many different variables. When you change code, it causes other issues. So that's something that needs to be resolved and Apple's aware of it. So it makes me think we could get a 16.5.1 fairly soon. With an iOS 16.5.1, they could get rid of the bug here, but also maybe a few others that are still remaining. The lock screen notifications are still a little bit buggy, and I've shown that before. So if you go into the lock screen, notifications when you scroll up and down are still buggy there. You can see that. That remains in 16.6 beta 1 as well. Now I know a lot of you want to know about battery life in iOS 16.5, so we'll I'll show you two different examples. The first one will go into Instagram here, and thanks to Abishek for sending this in, you'll see here on an 11 Pro Max with 95% battery health on iOS 16.5, he had three hours and 54 minutes of screen on time, six minutes of screen off time, and used about 50% of his battery, giving him about eight hours of screen on time if he was to use it all day until the battery was drained. That's okay. It's not as good as when it was new, but in general, it seems to be decent compared to previous versions. And many of you said the same thing. If we take a look at the YouTube community poll, there's over 7,300 votes. And at the time of this video, 29% of you say that iOS 16.5 battery is great. 54% of you say it's the same as iOS 16.4.1. Only 11% of you say that it's terrible. So that's pretty good. 11% saying that battery isn't great, where 89% of you are saying that it's as good as 16.4.1 or better. 5% of you are running the beta. So that's pretty good odds as far as if you're concerned about battery life on iOS 16.5, about 90% of people are saying that it's great. So no issues there from most people. As far as iOS 16.6 beta 1, it's been really solid. It's in fact very, very fast. As you can see on this phone, if we go into different things here, go into listen now, we'll wait for it to load. 
ProMotion is super smooth and everything just loads very quickly. I haven't had any crashes. I haven't had the screen reboot or had any resprings or anything like that. No issues whatsoever and everything's working well with the exception of the bugs I've mentioned before. One is with the notifications I already showed and the other is with the health app. In health, my logs, like I mentioned before, still crash the app. Again, I'm the only one I've seen that has this issue, so it's probably related to me specifically with an example medication. You'll see there, again, it crashes every time. So I have, I've submitted that into feedback. Hopefully they resolve that very soon. Also, the one other thing I wanted to mention is the screen wake up delay seems to be an issue for some people. Not necessarily on iOS 16.6, but it seems to wake up nice and fast with this update. So maybe with this version, they've fixed it. As far as the overall camera bug, I haven't really heard any difference. As far as the overall camera being any different with processing photos, I've noticed on 16.5 and 16.6, they haven't seemed to change it at all. So maybe Apple's happy with it. They don't really care. I've submitted information with that. You have as well. And hopefully they'll update it. Other YouTubers have made videos about it. It definitely needs to be changed, but maybe they just are going to wait until the next iPhone. We don't really know, but it seems to be an issue where it will darken different photos more than it should. It's not as you see what you get. Instead, they're changing it and over processing it, and there's no way to turn off HDR. So if you're wondering if you should install the beta, I would probably wait at this point either for beta two to see if there's any significant features or maybe wait until iOS 17 betas come out. I usually don't recommend the first version, but you could wait for that as it's only a couple weeks away. As far as overall battery on iOS 16.6 beta one, it's been okay. If we go into settings, go to battery, battery health and charging, I'm at 96% battery health. It dropped a little bit just today earlier. This was 97. And if we go back, you'll see here the last 10 days, Yesterday, I had four hours and four minutes of screen on time, seven hours and 57 minutes of screen idle time and used almost 75% of my battery. Today, two hours and 28 minutes and used 50%. I haven't had the greatest battery life here and it hasn't been great. I don't know why it keeps showing home and lock screen as I've turned off almost every notification. So this seems to be draining my battery more than normal and you can see the battery cycles too, as I mentioned before, 186 cycles here with coconut battery. So I'm not too worried about the battery health, but it's definitely going down faster than I've ever seen in any previous version since they started adding battery health. I had 100% for almost an entire year with the 14 Pro Max and charged it the exact same way and used it the same way. So it's either the betas using more battery and having it cycle more, or I'm not sure what else it would be. The charger's no different. As far as overall heat or anything like that, I'm pretty happy with it. It hasn't been very warm. It will warm up, of course, a little bit charging as all batteries do, but nothing extreme. In fact, it's very cool to the touch now, no issues whatsoever. As far as a few comments as what you had to say, let's take a look at that. Now we'll start with the one negative comment as all the others seem to be pretty positive. iOS 16.5 is the worst iOS I have ever used. There is heat and battery drain in normal usage on my iPhone 14 Pro Max. If we go to the next here, and these are just copied straight out of the YouTube community poll, you'll see Quad Rider Honda. Let's go here says using iOS 16.5 on my iPhone 14 Pro Max, after a few days, it's been very good for me on battery and performance, is snappy and the UI is smooth. Definitely better than 16.4.1 for me. Battery life seems to be a whole lot better for me on my iPhone 13 Pro Sierra Blue on iOS 16.5. Chris Palmer says, Battery life is okay for me using iOS 16.5 on my iPhone 14 Pro. It lasts me easily through a day with moderate to heavy use without ever plugging it in. It's sad that it's taken this long to start to get the software right as it nears the end of iOS 16. Apple should really focus on smooth and polished software implementation versus trying to release so many gimmicks before they have been thoroughly tested. 61 Espo says, so far so good with iOS 16.5 on my SE third gen. I haven't experienced any bugs, which is great because I prefer stability and reliability over anything else. Now, as far as when to expect the next beta, at this point, I wouldn't expect it this following week, most likely the week after, 
which is the week before WWDC 2023. So probably Tuesday or Wednesday of that week, they could change this up and release it sooner or even later. But then iOS 17 beta one is expected on June 5th if Apple does what they've done every year for many, many years. So I suspect most people are looking most forward to that, but I would really not recommend installing iOS 17 beta one typically, as those seem to be very buggy, at least for the first couple of betas. So if you want something stable, stay on iOS 16.6 betas or iOS 16.5. Otherwise, of course, if you have an extra device, you could try that out when it releases. If you found anything else, though, with iOS 16.5 or iOS 16.6 Beta 1, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already, though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.